98, here in Chandra Culture Center, we had a meeting, and that is started by Father Baby Shepherd was organizing that meeting. Um, in that meeting, we have few guests, and they are here now, and I'll introduce them now. And there was a landmark judgment, a historical word from the court of Kerala High Court by Justice Narayana Kurup and Lakshman Sir. It was a division bench, it seems. And that was the first in the history of the world that this walking in public places is banned. So now we see that more than 165 nationalities have followed the same tune. But still, we have to go far to accomplish the goal. So this is an another beginning after 22 years, a new beginning, an energized beginning. So we are here to uh, organize another meeting and with an expert, especially, I'm really happy to welcome all of you, especially Honorable Justice Devan Damachandran, who inaugurates this webinar. And the modus operandi is very clear, as um, many of you are attending webinars every day since uh, after this COVID pandemic initiated. And those who are speaking will be seen in your screen fully, and the rest of them must please keep your mobile or laptop in mute. So we will just avoid uh, such unnecessary sounds. Uh, those who haven't muted their computer or laptop, please do it. Francis, sir, from Bangladesh, please keep your laptop mute, mute. And I'm expecting our friends from different parts of the nation especially even from uh, Sri Lanka, our Buddhist monks are attending this session. And a surprising gift for these warriors. We have 22 persons, different persons from 16 nationalities are giving felicitations to this um, session this time. So after my welcome and introduction, we will start the felicitation and then the inauguration. And I'm really happy to welcome Justice Devan Ramachandran, a man of integrity with judicious judgment. And all people of Kerala appreciate his judgments and observations because of his unparalleled discernment. We are really happy that uh, he is here now, Honorable Justice Devan Ramachandran, and he promised me that. Uh, he will attend this session continuously, except a uh, few uh, minutes. And he's here with us. This is Devan Ramachandran. Uh, please raise your hands to uh, make them understand that, yeah, he's here, our sitting judge of Kerala High Court. Most welcome, sir. Let us give him a good clap. Though we can't hear, yeah, it's a gesture of our appreciation. That's all. Thank you. I'm Justice Kenarayana Kuru. Yeah, he's here. And we know that he is a, one among the judges, uh, judges who pronounced the judgments against smoking in public places. And he's the champion of No Tobacco Campaign and several national and international awards came to his credit. And we are really happy to welcome you, uh, Justice Akhenarayana uh, Guru. And he'll speak to us later. And most of all, let us uh, join our hands to welcome him. And I'm really happy to welcome Reverend Father Biju Wadakel CMI, our General Counselor for Social Apostolate. Being the General Counselor of CMI congregation, so Social Apostolate. He coordinates all the social and charitable activities of CMI congregation. A man of deep social commitment and a friend of the poor and needy. 
He has spent almost 2.5 crores during this time of COVID pandemic, for these two months, within these two months. Coordinating the entire activities of social activities of CMI congregation. And he's uh, here with us, Father Biju Varake. Uh, most welcome, Father. Yeah, yes, yes, uh, it's your hands. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Father Biju is here with us. Thank you, Father. And Mr. Raghuraj IAS. Raghuraj is here with us now. He's joining us uh, from Delhi. Definitely. Yeah, most welcome, Raghuraji. Uh, personally, the private secretary to the Honorable Ministry, Ministry of uh, PNG and Steel, and he's an IAS officer of MB Kader. And he has done a lot of researches in the areas of health and hygiene. And uh, once um, while we were discussing, he explained his concept of three years, and that is still eliminating my mind. Raghuraji, uh, most welcome to this. Uh, webinar. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time with us. Thank you. What to help for the ball? Three. Mr. Rajendra sir, the senior advocate, and a, the proud father of our Rajendra Rajendra. And Mr. Ji, uh, most welcome. And I appreciate uh, the presence of uh, Mr. Mr. Rajendra Nair, sir. Yes, he's always active in the social issues with his creative and intuitive interactions. Uh, so I'm really happy that you are here with us. Thank you so much, most of all. And our Father Baby Shepherd. Father Baby Shepherd is with us. And uh, he was the man uh, behind uh, this meeting in 1998 at Chavra Culture Center. And Father Baby Shepherd, an environmentalist in nature, He's a director, he was the former director of Chavra Culture Center, who led the team who organized the seminar against smoking in public places. Now he is the prior of LF Monastery, Varandarapalli, near Trichu. And most of um, baby shepherd, thank you so much for your presence here. And our Tia Wakisa, he's uh, always here with us, and his uh, beautiful smile, the former secretary of Chavra Culture Center. And he is the one who organized the seminar with Father Baby Shepherd and Mr. Uh, Johnson C. Abraham and Mr. Jolly Pavel. Uh, and he is the one who organized that seminar. And he's a former Lions District Governor, and now he is the director of Marilla. Thank you, uh, most welcome, uh, what you said. And our uh, professor, Monoma Krokar, uh, she's also with us now. A teacher, you are here now. I think she, uh, she's here. Professor Monoma Kokar. Yeah, she was present here. Anyway, uh, we welcome uh, her, Professor Monoma Kokar. And Professor Monoma Kokar and artist Ramachandran. They paved the way for this very landmark judgment because they filed this public interest litigation after the meeting at Chavra Culture Center in Kerala High Court in 1998. And she's always uh, standing for the social justice and to empower the women. And recently, she initiated a movement, Never Me. And that now, that movement is really interesting and the widely spreading among colleges and schools now. And most welcome, Professor Monoma Gokar, to this webinar. And Dr. Abraham Karikim, Abraham Karikim is with us now. And he is the Regional Executive Secretary and Regional Coordinator of South Asia and India Sri Lanka region of United Religions Initiative, one of the uh, leading interreligious organizations of movements in the world. Most welcome, Abraham. Very good, sir. And Sri Ashir Nasir from Pakistan. Ashir Ji, you are here, it seems. Ashir Nasir, I was here now, and he's the director of COP, an organization for social harmony and integration in Pakistan, and the executive secretary of United Religious Initiative, URI, 
in Pakistan, a very good, good friend of mine now, and most welcome, uh, Ashir Nasirji. And with him, uh, more than five participants are there in this webinar from Pakistan today. And now I welcome our Francis Holder from Bangladesh. Francis Ji, please raise your hands. My, my regards to all of you, Father. Uh, okay, most welcome, Francis Ji. My kind regards to all of you. Yeah, he's a, a true member of a United Religions Initiative and WFARC, World Fellowship of Religious Councils, and a uh, uh, loving person in Bangladesh. Most welcome, um, Francis Holder. And a venerable Vimala Bhuthi from Sri Lanka. He's also joining with us. A Vimala Bhuthi, a Buddhist monk from Sri Lanka. And he's a very famous online. Yeah, uh, from Sri Lanka, and his friends also are joining uh, today. And now our Dr. C.J. John, our moderator. CJ, Dr. C.J. John was the person who moderated the session in 1998, the very session which paved the way for this uh, historical Vedic painter. He's one of the famous uh, psychiatrists in Kerala a most sought out psychiatrist, I would say, and he is the doctor at uh, Medical Hospital in Cochin. Most welcome, uh, Dr. CJ John, sir. And he is very busy, you know that. Um, we appreciate your presence. Thank you. And we are organizing this seminar in collaboration with uh, Deepika, the daily newspaper, the first daily in Kerala. And uh, we have the representative of Deepika, Mr. CJ Painarat is with us. Uh, Sijo, we welcome you to this seminar. Most welcome. Uh, yeah, now uh, Professor Monoma Gokar is visible now. Uh, yeah, uh, teacher, we I have already introduced you. Uh, you might have heard that what I have said about you. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, teacher. And we don't have any time to waste now. So uh, I very cordially invite Justice Devan Ramachandran the Honorable Justice of Kerala High Court for the inaugural lectures. Thank you for having me. This is an important international seminar. I was thinking very pertinently, the judgment that we are discussing today, we are examining today, is more relevant in these times than it was 21 years ago in the year 1999, when it was delivered by the most honorable Justice Narana Kurup, sir. Now, in the present COVID-19 scenario, I think everybody understands and associates the risk of smoking with the consequences of the disease. And though everybody knows, including those who smoke, the rather injurious nature of the habit. It's remarkable and it's an irony that this continues to be one of the most common and ubiquitous uh, abusive habits that the human being continues to hold. I'm just reminded of the uh, words of Kurt Vonnegut, one of the American writers. He famously said, smoking is a classy way to commit suicide. But I know that there are smokers all through our history. The most famous of them being uh, Mark Twain. He said on a very light, you would perhaps remember what he said in a jocular fashion. He said that uh, stopping smoking is one of the most easiest things in the world. And that times in my life. But the importance of this issue cannot be lost sight, particularly when we are combating the pandemic now. Now the judgment we are discussing, in my view, is a path-breaking one, is an epoch-making one, is a causes celebre as we lawyers speak about judgments. Because as early as in the year 1999, 
when i do not think any other state in, in in india or perhaps not many countries in the world have thought of the deleterious consequences of this second hand smoke or the what we know which is which is known as a passive smoking or the environmental smoke exposure remarkably is lordship justice nayana kuru sitting along with justice ar lakshman who later adorned the supreme court took upon themselves and judgment is authored by justice kuru the burden of uh informing the world how injurious passive smoking can be i'm sure that the panelists have perhaps read the judgment just as kuru very deftly went through the various concepts that are involved i'm sure he was aware that uh, his hands were tied to a large extent because he could not have either legislated not could he have directed the government to legislate but after having a complete overview a panoptic view of the consequences of smoking it is absolutely lucidly written in the judgment the lordships then declare that passive smoking or a person who commits the the action of passive smoking can be brought under sections 238 278 and section 133 of the ipc 278 of course is making the atmosphere noxious and 133 is nuisance for those students of law would perhaps remember these are the sections that uh, the judgment deals with and very interestingly there are the judgment goes to declare that passive smoking smoking in public spaces is a crime and an affront on article 21 of the constitution which means that it goes against the right of an individual to a healthy life wonderful thought and this was in the year 1999 when i had only put in about 8 years as a lawyer and i used to appear before justice kurup regularly those days i know how public spirited and socially committed he was his uh, campaign against the mosquito menace is also something which is very interesting now i said that that judgment is more relevant now in these days and it was 1999 when one understands the ramifications of the covid-19 uh, pandemic i do not know if any one of you have actually seen a statement published by the who the world health organization on the 11th of september 2020 i'm sorry uh, 11th of uh, may 2020 i have a copy of the statement with me if you have seen that statement who makes a correlation to smoking and covid-19 uh, consequences but very interestingly perhaps due to reasons that we cannot speak openly now or i cannot speak only now no government be it the central government or the state government have ever brought out an advisory in the backdrop of the pandemic that smoking can be a killer now if you go through that statement which is available online i have in fact a copy on my phone it says it it actually went through two parameters it examined two parameters the first was whether a smoker is in a higher risk to contract the covid-19 virus the second was whether a smoker would be exposed to a high risk of post covid complications or death on the first parameter the who says that they do not have enough evidence or materials to conclude one way or the other as of studies are still going on we do not know in future what the uh, final outcome will be however with respect on the question of the second parameter as to whether a person who smokes is in a, is a, a, runs a higher risk of complications and death consequent to covid-19 virus the answer is affirmative the answers of the reasons are very simple i do not think it, be, it requires a, too much of thought on that because covid-19 is a sars 2 it's the it's a respiratory system uh, and it naturally affects the lungs more than any other organ of the human body 
smoking is known to attack the lungs apart from the all the other other internal organs and obviously therefore the correlation between covid 19 and smoking would become absolutely obvious but as i've already said remarkably i have not seen any advisory asking people not to smoke from the angle of covid 19 i may be wrong if i'm wrong you can correct me during the seminar but this is very very important because if people are told how vulnerable they would be as smokers to the ravages of COVID-19, I'm certain people will have a rethink and a rethought on their habit. Now, this is all with respect to smoking. I can understand that a person chooses to smoke. He chooses to injure himself. He chooses to take the option of uh, harming him. But then his actions cannot harm the person. And this is the epochal nature of the judgment that we are discussing. What their lordships, including Justice Kurup, said was not that smoking has to be banned, which I'm sure that the court could not have done, and it cannot be done even today because of the prohibitions of jurisdiction, the limitations of jurisdiction that we have as judges. However, the judgment goes to say that even if you want to smoke, you smoke, and that is your risk, but you have no business to cause a risk to another person. The judgment speaks volumes on the impact of passive smoking on secondhand smoke and it rings a bell in tune with the bell that the lovely rings today and that is the importance of the judgment after 21 years now you are all aware perhaps or you will know as the seminar goes through i'm sure justice kurup will also speak about that nearly two years after his judgment that we are discussing today the supreme court of india in murli diora versus union of india declared smoking to be an unconstitutional act i'm sorry smoking in public and virtually banned it our judgment that we are discussing today declares it to be contrary to article 21 and makes it a punishable offense and uh, i'm told that uh, necessary rules and, and and regulations have also been brought out by the state now imagine when a smoker is exposed to so much of uh, of uh, of risks what would be the consequence of a person who gets a secondhand smoke? He is forced to be a passive smoker. It could be the family of the person who is smoking. It could be a person who is otherwise outside. And as I've already said, I'm reiterating, the importance of this topic is absolutely relevant at this time because just imagine, we are all asked to wear masks. We are all asked to cover our faces. This is to ensure that our droplets are our, our, our droplets from the mouth do not escape. In that context, how can anyone smoke in public? Because when your risk of even keeping your mouth unprotected is so much to the others, apart from yourself. Because wearing a mask, believe me, is more to protect another person than yourself. It has been well documented and chronicled that people are asked to wear masks because you may be a person without the knowledge of being a carrier, an infected person, without being a carrier, an, an, an asymptomatic uh, a carrier. And therefore, you are asked to cover your nose so that you will not unwittingly, when you speak or when you sneeze or when you or you spit, it does not, the, the bodily fluids do not spread out, the droplets do not enter the air and then uh, infect another person. Imagine, it's not smoking far worse and therefore, when you are smoking in public in these times, obviously, you are committing a It does not have to be restated at all. I was just going through the WHO statement again. Interestingly, it says that 20 minutes after you stop smoking, in fact, they're talking about quitting smoking, not smoking, not uh, intermittently stopping. It says that the elevated uh, heart rate and BP drops in 20 minutes. In 12 hours, the carbon monoxide level becomes normal. In 2 to 12 weeks, the circulation, blood circulation and lung functions become normal. And in 1 to 9 months, coughing and shortness of breaths virtually stops. Now, all these ramifications are applicable to a person who is exposed to passive smoking. Now, a person who smokes takes the uh, burden on himself Takes, carries the risk on himself fully and, and, and wittingly. But imagine a person who is forced to all this exposure unwittingly. 
this is the importance of this judgment this is by far the first judgment in india and perhaps anywhere in the world and that is the importance of it i'm glad that you have now taken on yourself the the pleasant task of uh, discussing this judgment in my view it is not merely enough that you discuss it we have to take it to the persons who concern the people in in power and in in govern the importance of taking a complete plan on public opinion in the time of covid 19 and to have an advisory issue at the level either at the government level or i mean at the central government level or the state government level so educate people the, the absolute risk that they carry when they are smoke or when they are exposed to a passive smoke i hope that this seminar this webinar that's a new word this webinar will be a path breaking uh, leader in that and i wish all of you all the very best and for sake of formality i declare that this webinar is formally uh, inaugurated thank you very much i'll stop with a small disclaimer i may have to discontinue in a few minutes or or, or another 10 minutes because i have another uh, 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 issue to attend to so i listen particularly to way to to the to the speech of justice narana kurup in any case because i would like to know what went through his mind the mentation of his lordship when he delivered this judgment thank you very much and all the very best to you thank you thank you thank you thank you so much justice and amazon for a beautiful speech and we are really happy that you are spending um, again your time with us so uh just going to hear before our justice can arrain could be have a an appreciation uh, from australia uh, francesca torcasio barbaris i is a un representative of nj order and let us see hi my name is francesca and i'm the current youth representative for the ibvm and cj ngos at the united nations i want to congratulate the team working on the judgment on the banning of smoking in public places and suggest that in my hometown in melbourne in australia smoking is illegal in most outdoor places including dining areas and around children and child care centers and schools and hospitals and healthcare centers during this time in covid we need to make sure that we keep our outside air clean but also keeping our air inside our bodies clean and our lungs clean and healthy especially for those who choose not to smoke given the current vulnerabilities with covid and respiratory illness Das Grundgesetzurteil bezüglich eines generellen Rauchverbots in öffentlichen Räumen ist vom obersten Gerichtshof in Kerala am 12. Juli 1999 verabschiedet worden. Es gilt in dieser Art auch in Deutschland und EU-weit. Als Konsequenz aus der Covid-19-Krise müssen wir lernen, die Gesundheit unseres Körpers zu schützen. Daher möchte ich noch einmal dem Team, das sich für die Durchsetzung des generellen Rauchverbots eingesetzt hat, danken. Mein besonderer Dank gilt dem Shavara Kulturcenter, Richter Narayana Kurup, Dr. C. Otjon, Professor Momana Kokat und TA Wake. Dankeschön. Thank you. Uh, like that uh, we have so many Uh, persons today uh, they are joined with us with a great appreciation uh, thank you mr john um, brother from from germany and francisca from australia and now i welcome our justice kanarayana kuru and as uh, justice devan ramachandran asked what would, what would have been uh, in that time your mind and what's your mind now <clears throat> please unmute please unmute your mobile group uh, justice group please unmute your mobile Yeah, okay. my, my brother and brother devan ramachandran has uh, made a scholarly address with the result 
nothing is left to me to say before this uh, in this seminar either about tobacco or about the covid 19 even so i had to say something because the of the fact that i happen to be the judge who uh, <coughs> penned the landmark wording banning smoking in public places if i remember correct uh, it was on 12th july 1999 the kerala high court passed the judgment <coughs> if we could say it's a landmark judgment banning smoking in public places um it is unique is a uniqueness lies in the fact that uh, it has addressed the scourge of second hand smoke or environmental tobacco smoke coupled with a ban on smoking in public places in the year 1999 it is the first ever judicial initiative in the world that has the uniqueness of addressing the scourge of uh, second hand smoke coupled with a ban on smoking in public places this judgment has been hailed by the international community including the united nations and who <coughs> as a unique contribution uh, by the judiciary to protect human rights to health in developing countries uh, that was the citation given to me at jordan in the year 2001 by uh, in a in a global seminar organized by the who imbibing the spirit of the verdict parliament of india has passed a comprehensive law uh imposing stringent control on tobacco the use of tobacco the sale of tobacco distribution of tobacco use of tobacco by children display of advertisements in cinema all these things and uh, now the slew of measures have been introduced by the government and uh, moreover the imbibing the spirit of the judgment and the law passed by parliament in 2003 all the sections of the law came into force in 2003 the committee of nations uh, joined followed suit with the result 181 nations it has become uh, it has been followed there has been stringent restrictions uh, on the tobacco they have realized for the first time how dangerous or villainous the tobacco is the lethal uh, leaf why i say tobacco is uh, is a dangerous thing the most dangerous thing why i say tobacco is a dangerous thing because in india alone 1 million people die every year because of tobacco related diseases 1 million people die every year because of tobacco related diseases 1 million people die every year because of tobacco related diseases and in india 10 lakhs and in the 20th century world over 100 million died because of tobacco related diseases and in the 21st century if the current trend continues towards the end of 21st century the indian population now a billion plus that much number of people are expected to die because of tobacco related diseases that is why i say tobacco is the greatest uh, uh, monster we are facing greatest monster why i say it is not tsunami it is not aids it is not nuclear bomb even the number of people uh, killed by tsunami tsunami of course leaves a trail of loss of lives and destruction but number of people killed are uh, you know very low compared to tobacco similarly number of people killed by aids is far less compared to number of people killed by uh, tobacco now nuclear bomb no sane nation or any uh, political leader with something in the uh, uh, brain will order a nuclear bomb a nuclear nuclear attack because in a nuclear scenario bomb in a nuclear war there will be no victor nor vanquished there will be no victor no vanquished victory will be as bad as defeat and all will be cremated equal so viewed in this perspective it is not tsunami it is not aids it is not even nuclear bomb it is tobacco that kills uh, um, hundreds of thousands and millions of people so we address the uh, issue very seriously now <coughs> <laughs> the disease is tobacco cause you see head to toe the head and neck cancer oral cancer esophageal cancer lung cancer like that then you see it is a major risk factor for coronary artery disease myocardial infarction and then it aggravates hypertension these are all major killers so view in this perspective also tobacco is the greatest killer let us uh, kill the enemy of uh, a man can and we will have to fight it uh, 
at, at all authority at our command jamaica now one important factor we have to address now in the context of uh, corona uh, uh, covid 19 is that um, now you smoke what is the mechanism of covid 19 the virus enters the human body it is a virus not bacteria that it can in order to enter the human body it has to break the cell inside if the resistance is pure immunity is pure the covid 19 virus is easier to enter the system and to make it chaos uh, uh, inside because you know what it does is there will be a conflict there will be a fight between the corona virus and the immune system that produces what is known as uh, uh, <clears throat> um 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 inflammation inflammation kinetic kinetic strong inside the body the inflamed the lung is inflamed highly inflamed the breathing becomes difficult oxygen drops the inflammation spreads to adjoining uh, organs major organ being heart and respiratory cardiopulmonary arrest and all sorts of complications and there is no treatment for that people say hydroxychloroquine is good this drug is good that drug is good and uh, all uh, drugs are in the experimental stage we have not come to anything early symptomatic treatment alone is uh, there so in this context uh devan just ramen then ramen and then has already addressed that question uh, in, in a little bit detail because in the present context the smoking has assumed more important not really smoking the second hand smoke or environmental tobacco smoke which is uh, equally if not more harmful uh the to people like uh, direct smoke if once you um, asymptomatic subject smokes the smoke inhale gets out of his body exhale the smoke that goes all around and uh, unless it is controlled that will be another source of uh, infection to the people and so therefore it is all the more important that we have to uh, concentrate on the control of tobacco smoking both direct and indirect thank you so much this is ganarayana the former what is the formation of you also and he still uh, is the commission of the state government thank you so much he is still alive and he is active in this field and a champion of uh, this no tobacco campaign so thank you so much for your great uh, intuitions and now let us see uh, two more uh, the appreciations from different parts of the world hello everyone good night from honduras that's in central america i am alexandra enriquez and i am an environmental engineer um in my country it is allowed to smoke people can still have the chance to consume that substance but they cannot do it on buildings on parking lots on uh, shopping malls on sports cultural um educational or some uh, healthcare centers basically in any public or private open space less than 2 meters from where they meet or transit people even this is a good start this is not enough for me and we need more initiatives the government should completely ban smoking and spend more money on initiatives to control and prohibit this activity smoking is bad for our health and for the health of our planet Hello, my name is Jara Dayag and I'm a registered psychologist and a psychology professor from Manila, Philippines. I would like to show my appreciation and congratulate the team behind the landmark decision of banning the use of tobacco products in public spaces. Now, we have a similar decision here in the Philippines to ban the use of tobacco products in public. and i know for a fact that this decision is beneficial not only for people's health but also for the environment now during these times we have this uh, covid-19 virus going around and we need to bolster an, our immune system to fight this virus and also at the same time to take care of the environment now thank you team congratulations team for working hard and keep up the good work 
Hello, my name is Tiziana. I'm from Germany. I congratulate the team behind the landmark judgment of Kerala High Court to ban smoking in public places. I congratulate Shivara Culture Center Kochi and, and its associates for taking a noble initiative to ban smoking in public places. In Germany, this has not been implemented. In the post-COVID-19 period, we need to protect our nature by keeping it clean and fresh. Let us join our hands to make this world a better place. Thank you so much. I am happy to congratulate the team behind the landmark judgment banning the smoking in public places, especially the Chavada Cultural Center in Kochi and all of its collaborators. I wish to congratulate also Father Roby Kananchira for organizing this international webinar to facilitate the process of spreading the word. I am sure that smoking in public places is injurious to the health of humanity and we are obligated to protect nature and for doing our best to safeguard humanity. My name is Luis Suarez. I am the former chairman of the American Business Council in Kuwait. I currently reside in both Kuwait and in New York, and I am very pleased to be able to add my words of congratulation to the chorus of others who are going to be participating in the webinar and who are doing their best to make this process successful. Thank you all very much for this opportunity to add my voice. Thank you so much, dear ones. And I would like to I invite our father, uh, Biju Varakel, CMI, General Counselor for Social Apostate, uh, for his words of appreciation and his concepts, expressions. I take this opportunity to congratulate Dawra Cultural Center for taking this initiative to bring together all the great personalities in way or other way were instrumental in bringing about the landmark judgment banning smoking in public place. I'm happy that Tavara Culture Center has been from its very inception intervening in matters that are at most important to the welfare of the society as a whole. I congratulate and appreciate your commitment to the society and its welfare. I also take this opportunity to congratulate our Father Baby Shepherd, CMI, then Director of Chaura Culture Center, Mr. Tio Waki, then Secretary who organized the seminar on the ill effect of smoking tobacco in any form at public places. The seminar was inaugurated by Honorable Justice Narayana Kurup, who is present here, I also congratulate him for his very that uh, verdict. I really appreciate and congratulate them for taking such a great decision, and each and every one who actively involved in taking this historic step. I also, in a special way, appreciate and congratulate. Father Arobi and the team of Chaura Cultural Center. When we think about banning smoking in public places, as we know, various health organizations and NGOs and the governments have been actively combining against this danger, harm, threat, and adverse impact of smoking on health of the individual and society. When we do such things, there is personal and also there is a social aspect. We personally bring harm to our bodies. And when we are in a public place, we are harm to the other people. Or other ways we can say that we are silently killing the other person. The initiative we have taken has definitely brought about great impact on the whole world. As I know, I can confidently say that to a great extent, this initiative has brought much benefit to individual and also in our social health. 
but we need to continuously remind ourselves and the society to make it more effective in the lives of the more and more people. Sometimes when we speak about smoking, smoking is an addiction, as we know, and as we hear from many, it leads to the death of a person. We argue and try to establish that smoking is injurious to health. And we are often judgmental about those who smoke and criticize them. Now I would say, instead of criticizing them, we may have to find out why of smoking or what is the reason behind. And as we know, it is not an easy thing. There will be opposition from every corner, but we have to make others aware of its consequences, especially to our uh, young generation. And as we know, happiness is not something ready-made. It comes from our own habits. As we know, habit, it is good or bad, are formed by repeated actions or repeated several or innumerable times. And it is a great challenge to change a habit. Habits can change only with deep awareness with strong motivation, attitude, and conviction. I hope and pray these kind of discussions will always help to rededicate ourselves for such causes and will help to remind the people and create awareness in the society, even in the individual. Of course, we have a law the Honorable Court has shown his commitment to the good health of the society and individual by giving the landmark judgment. Now it is for the society and individuals to display responsible behavior as good and law abiding citizens. To make such historic initiatives continuously Effective and fruitful various agencies of social system has to work as a team and make a concrete effort. Our experience tells us that use force alone cannot bring in change of habit. Our ability to create awareness on a strong, stable and continuous basis will go a long way in bringing about change in the habits of the people. It does not mean that enforcing law is not important. It is very important, but if you want to change the habit, as I said, it has to come from within, means from our own life. For that, we need to have a good atmosphere and various agencies has to work together to inform, to inspire, to enforce. Only then we can achieve the radical change. So I take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you so that we may continue to work for the better world, better society, where we may have real peace, happiness and joy. Thank you. Thank you, Father uh, Biju Vadakil, General Counselor for Social Apostolate of CMI Congregation, for your enlightening words. And now, our Honorable Justice Devan Ramachandran is leaving for us for time being, and he'll be back soon. And thank you uh, so much, Devan Ramachandran, sir, for your being with us. Uh, we really appreciate your presence till now, and we are waiting for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure. 
And now, just see a few more appreciations from different parts of the world. Hi, my, my name is Walter Porada. I congratulate the team uh, behind the landmark judgment of Kerala High Court to ban the smoking in public places. I congratulate uh, Javara Cultural Center uh, and its associates for making this noble initiative to ban smoking. In my place, it's only recent implemented and I think it's necessary, especially after this COVID crisis, we have to really take care of our nature and good luck. Sono la dottoressa Giovanna Fano, direttore di un'unità operativa anestesia e rianimazione dell'ospedale dell Andrea Crotto da Pagani, sono italiana. Vengo subito a dunque. Allora, il fumo passivo rappresenta il principale fattore inquinante degli ambienti chiusi, tale da provocare nel mondo 600 milioni di morti. Ed è per questo che approvo e condivido con, profondo, con profonda stima ed orgoglio chi per la prima volta nel 1999 ha approvato la legge di abolizione del fumo negli ambienti chiusi, perché in Italia è avvenuta soltanto nel 2005 con la legge Sicchia. Il merito di questa iniziativa va al Ciavara Caccia del Center e dai suoi collaboratori, eh, parlo del Monnam Kokkad giudice, eh, Narayana Kurup e, e, le, e Lejmanan. L'iniziativa ancora più importante oggi, in questo periodo di pandemia da Covid-19, in cui abbiamo bisogno oggi più che mai di aria pulita. Eh, quindi il eh, motto di tutti deve essere eh, unico ed è un mondo senza fumo, perché chi fuma uccide e uccide anche te, devi di smettere. Grazie. Yeah, Dr. Giovanni uh, Alfano from Italy was uh, giving her a message in Italian. Uh, so uh, many people, different part of uh, the world, is aware of the impact of this law and they are really happy. And many are again need a little more impetus in this one. So now may I just hand over the baton to our the alternate moderator until the meeting uh, during the time of the first meeting in 1998 uh, at Chavra Culture Center. It is none other than uh, uh, Sita John, sir. Now I'm just handing my baton to you. And uh, in between, when it is needed, I'll just intervene. Otherwise, it's uh, time for you. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie Etchen. <laughs> The memories of uh, the seminar 23 years ago is still fresh in my memory. During the process of the seminar, Honorable Justice uh, uh, Narayana Kurpasar will remember the theme of uh, uh, probably uh, smoking in public uh, is a right of uh, denying life emerged. And uh, you remember that uh, we concluded the seminar by saying that See, there is a scope for uh, giving a case on this uh, line. And that was the summing up of the seminar 23 years ago. We had a coffee discussion the same day in the room of uh, Reverend Father Baby Shepherd, where uh, uh, Mr. Worky also participated. And uh, they were looking for somebody to file the case and other things to take forward this suggestion. Interestingly, today, uh, after uh, Honorable Justice Devan Ramachandran has uh, delivered his inaugural address, I was wondering, uh, I should uh, probably speak about uh, the, the recommendation of this seminar well ahead in the beginning itself. Giving an advisory by the government for the public saying that people will have to stop smoking during COVID days. Just as they give uh, recommendations to public saying that don't spit in public, make hand wash compulsory. This also has to be an advisory for the public because as has been already mentioned, this makes the lung very vulnerable for the COVID virus to penetrate, lead them into complications of COVID, probably needing 
enormous number of ventilators for the smokers in the eventuality of uh, uh, the COVID complications. So uh, perhaps uh, opening this uh, uh, webinar uh, with the support of uh, Honorable Justice Narayana Kurp and with the support of whatever that has been said by uh, Honorable Justice uh, Mr. Devan Ramachandran, I suppose the seminar should think in the, these lines to probably uh, give this sort of a recommendation to the government uh, in a written form by Chavara Culture Center tomorrow itself. Yeah, sure. Now, this webinar, uh, it has to be very informal. I will call upon persons, kindly restrict to maximum of three minutes in responding uh, so that uh, we can uh, keep the process going on. And uh, uh, yeah, scientific things have been already said by Honorable Justice uh, Narayana Kurtu, sir. Uh, let me ask uh, Father Baby Shepherd uh, first. Uh, what actually prompted you to organize uh, such a seminar 23 years ago? I mean, this has become prophetic right now to uh, Father Baby Shepherd. Yeah, Father. Can I talk? Can, can I talk? I'm, talking, I'm taking much time. Thank you, Dr. John and Worky and Johnson, uh, Jolie and uh, Father. Roby conducting this thing and all respected judges and our priest and our our uh, our council is with us and all the respected people participating all over the world. Actually, uh, Mr. Uh, T. A. Warki took the initiation and he gave us the inspiration and the awareness the importance of uh, uh, stop, stop public smoking. The, he told us first time. Actually, T. Uh, T the work inspired me and the team uh, the importance of stop stopping uh, public smoking so and uh, we did the that was the that was the time we are uh, developing a lot of uh, uh, action plans through the chavara culture center and we have a great two, two, two three people great people those who died the friends of uh, uh, chavara culture late uh, um, krishnaya justice krishnaya he was a friend of us and he was an inspiration behind uh, all these activities. And uh, Father Alex Ukan, he was our prayer general, he's late, he's died now, he was an inspiration. And Sanu Master was with us and a lot of people were great people of uh, our, our country, our state was inspiring us to do some kind of things. And that is the, uh, that was the time we were doing something for the good of the society and doing something good for the people. So T. A. Worki, he gave us, and uh, Justice Narana Kurup, and Monima Kokar, and the team worked for uh, this uh, implementation of smoking. I am not taking much time. I would like to thank. We implement the implementation was a tough time, and the implementation was we are discussed and we we did a lot of good job for that. Our media, our police officers, our some of our uh, religious and uh, social activities helped us. I'm not taking much time. So the media did a lot of good work and media give us a lot of support. Some of them criticized us too, but the media helped us. And that was the thing I would like to say now. Thank you, uh, Father Baby Shepherd. We'll just hear shortly from uh, Mr. T.A. Worki and we'll have two messages uh, playing after this. Uh, Worki, you remember that we organized uh, another seminar after the verdict, uh, discussing the verdict and there were slandered people in that audience by tobacco companies who used to say that, look, uh, uh, this uh, will deprive uh, the laborers of jobs. It will create a job uh, crisis and other things. Do you remember that that seminar also as a secular to this thing? What prompted you, uh, uh, Mr. T.A. Worki, to probably take up this and uh, organize this seminar? Unmute, unmute. Please unmute. Okay. okay, please unmute. Yeah. Yes. Still not audible. Mr. Worki, unmute. Still not audible. Okay. Am yeah, I go audible on. now? Yes, yes. yes go sir. on. Good evening, everybody. It brings me nostalgia when I sit here in this group to see Father Baby Shepherd, Dr. John, 
Manam Mukhukad, Justice Kuroop, and everybody who participated in the conference that day, seminar. Uh, the, the idea came to my mind because of, of my own uh, personal experience. I was a chain smoker till 1980. When I stopped smoking, I had a lot of health advantages. Ever since I stopped in 1980, I was a, uh, uh, an advocate for non-smoking activities. In the year 1998, this Dr. Uh, Father uh, Baby Shepherd, who was the director, we were discussing each, each and everything under the sky, which is beneficial to the human beings those days. We have discussed so many uh, subjects like uh, anthrax. There was no anthrax in Kerala then. There was anthrax came only up to, I mean, uh, uh, I mean uh, 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 Mysore those days. We are talking about Alzheimer's, we are talking about uh, uh, diabetes, we are talking about uh, elderly care. Every such subjects were discussed those days in Chavragatism. Even today that's the case. Father Robi is another person, dynamic person. We have discussed about this common uh, seminar only last week. He took hardly one week. Such a speed man. Today I was talking about him that he is a person like uh, our ex-chief minister Kanagar. He does things, implement things in such a speed. Uh, when we have discussed, we thought that we'll, uh, I mean, include people from all over life, all of uh, uh, um, uh, all walks of life. We had a doctor, physician. We had a, I mean, a professor. Uh, we had a student. We have a sportsman. We have a businessman. Everybody. We had an ex-smoker. Everybody came and presented. The, we had a novelist also there. Everybody came and presented their views. Ultimately, uh, in his inaugural address. Uh, Justice Kurup has openly mentioned that smoking should be banned at public places. That gives me strength and courage to go to the court with the public investigation. We, uh, we discussed in the room, as uh, Dr. John said, um, who will go for that. I didn't want to go because I was running an establishment. Doctors didn't want to go. Professor Mona Mokokash was the right person because she is a professor. She is a Pray every day. She's a victim. Every day she's traveling from Cochin to I mean, Kotayam in a train which is fully smoked. Then, of course, she was a social celebrity. Then she has gone for filing the case along with another good friend of mine, Mr. Ramakrishna. Then, rest is history. It has come to Justice Kuru's uh, uh, bench along with his uh, senior uh, advocate, sorry, uh, Justice A.R. Lechman. They have made a landmark judgment. As Doc, I mean, Justice uh, Devan Ramanujan mentioned, it was not a legal report. It was a medical report. Justice Kurup narrated the ill effects of uh, I mean, uh, tobacco. No, where no other court would have never suspended that kind of a judgment because that was such an exclusive uh, judgment that what he made. One thing I have noticed that he was not only passing a judgment. He was after that. Implementation. He asked all the superintendents of police in all the districts to give him reports every week how many people were demanded for smoking in public places. That was the history of the smoking. Now, as Justice Damendran told, this is a time of COVID. This is the right time to take another step because we can take any kind of a step, uh, like disaster under the disaster management law. Continue, any directives continue. can be given by the government. Smoking should be banned during these days. If alcohol can be banned for two months, if uh, worship can be banned or, or it, um, um, uh, discouraged, why not smoking? What is happening in the, in the smoking, in the smoking scenario? There are around 8 million people die every year out of smoking. Out of COVID, Till today, the death is 4 lakhs. 80 lakhs people are dying every year due to smoking. COVID is only very, very negligible death so far. Let us hope and pray that uh, it will not increase. So this is the right time for the government, for the parliament, the executive and the judiciary. These days the judiciary is taking a sewer motor. Without anybody filing any case, the judges also can I mean, uh, take cases against you. And this is the right time to ban smoking. That's the only way to do that. 
i know there are there are so many uh, uh, departments in the ministry working for smoking and propagates promote smoking the agricultural ministry the trade ministry the labor ministry everybody is working to promote smoking there is only one single department that's the health ministry and a small i mean a uh, 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 fraction of icmr is working against cessation of smoking i think this is the right time to government and this seminar asked dr john said that we should make a appeal to the government on the concerned authority and and this this should be written as a white report uh, by this uh, webinar conducted by uh uh chaurakar center this time i would like to uh, record my thanks to father robi for arranging such a um, uh, uh, conference now father baby shepherd for organizing such a wonderful seminar in 1998 this is guru to inaugurate it dr john moderator and professor monamoko god who was a participant and he is very mainly opposed smoking laws that day and she has gone uh, to the court uh, for the, uh, for filing this pal Mr. Johnson and Yoli, who was the office manager in those days, and I would like to uh, uh, thank everybody who has uh, attended to our call and attended this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aki. Before going to uh, Professor Monama Kokkar, let me hear from uh, Advocate uh, Raj Rajendra Sir, uh, Rajendra Nair Sir, about uh, his views on the whole thing in 23 years after this verdict. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Sir John. Fortunately, I was one of the lawyers before Justice Narayana Kuru and our lecturer who argued the case. Incidentally, I must mention that another case, um, Petty, where in Petitioners, where uh, Samata Law Society of which I was the president, and uh, Professor C. Mangala Devi, who is a member of that society, my wife too. who is always a victim of this passive smoking suffering from asthma was also party the mental were had together indeed the when the judgment came only in one case judgment was pronounced by sir lexman went to supreme court later uh, justice narayana kuru and justice n krishna nair together disposed of the matter wherein some of the law society and professor sumangala bear the petitioners on the same lines it is indeed a great um, uh, judicial uh, pro activity which has uh, brought in this uh, historic judgment in fact personally for me thereafter uh, and even before that always in the public street when i go for a morning walk or evening walk seeing the person smoking on the street i used to stand before the smoker and uh, request or dictate him to throw away the cigarette 99.9% of the persons obeyed many people did not obey but even then after this statement and after the uh, rules made by the government and the police action which was triggered by the directions of the court do not uh, uh, with the uh, legal uh, support of the government it went on well smoking has come down at least in kerala streets and it has uh, helped to preserve the health of vulnerable elders and this and uh, such a proactive judicial interference will do great things in many areas where we need support for health health is to be preserved and supported by the government of india state governments that is indeed a, a what we the, the the crux of article 21 where you say you are life and personal liberty etc to bring what us uh, interpreted to mean and to include the right to live with the dignity with proper health in this covid area covid season and we are now certainly reminded of informed of the need to preserve health by having proper diet by abandoning everything and uh, nowadays now uh, we are in another mission we are requesting people to avoid sugar to start with a healthy lifestyle thank you for the uh, for the the 
several uh, special lobby community generation and several friends for uh, taking up this subject at, during these days. It will go a long way for our social work. The people with social commitment uh, will come together and uh, we will do much more good things which will be certainly useful for the society. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rajendra Nair, sir. Uh, that's a uh, looking back at uh, probably the evaluation of the scenario as of today. Uh, we'll, we'll move, uh, Robiachan has informed me that there is some net, uh, network problem there. We, we cannot play the videos right now. I'll go to uh, Professor Monama Kokkad and then we'll pick up uh, some uh, persons from Bangladesh or Pakistan to fill in uh, that message part of it. So, Professor Monama Kokkad, uh, I've heard that uh, you were traveling in train, had to be exposed to passive smoking, and you are actually a victim uh, of passive smoking. Uh, could you briefly tell me uh, what prompted you to take up the initiative to go to the school? Professor Moenama. Professor Moenama, can you hear? Unmute, unmute, ma'am. Please unmute. Hello. Ah, yeah. Hello. Yeah. I can't hear, can't hear. Go on. Hello. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We can hear. We can hear, we can hear. Hello, am, am I audible? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. You can hear me? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Good evening to all of you. Thank you, Dr. C.J. John. Uh, the most beautiful things in, in the world cannot be seen or touched. They should be felt by the heart. Yes. I am reliving one of the most beautiful experiences in my life when I became instrumental in the year 1999 to get the ban on smoking in public places. I believe that it was part of the Almighty's plans about my life, such an accidental thing. It was the result of a teamwork, and I am always grateful to the two eminent judges, Justice Leshmanan and Justice Narayana Kuruk, and also to Father Baby Shepherd and Mr. T.A. Verki, who organized the seminar on smoking in Chavra Cultural Center in the year 1998. The verdict, which was the first of its kind in the whole world, has brought about tremendous changes in the smoking habits of people. Having realized the dangerous health hazards of smoking, thousands gave it up. Several smokers felt guilty that their smoking was harmful, not only to themselves, but also to their dear ones, especially wife and children. Many letters I received soon after the verdict had such confessions. Those who have given up smoking are lucky during these corona times because they are less prone to the disease. Looking back, I am so happy and proud that smoking has disappeared in Kerala from houses, offices, theaters, educational institutions, shopping malls, auditoriums, buses, trains, amounting to almost 90%. Balance 10% is seen in roads, which happens because of the indifference of the police personnel on duty. If fine is strictly imposed on such smoking, it will also completely disappear and we will be 100% smoking free. According to me, there's a very disheartening thing as far as smoking is concerned. The heroes in and TV series are made to smoke on screen, which easily influences our youth and children who look up to these characters with admiration. Why should smoking and drinking be pictured as an essential part of movies and serials? 
is there anybody who is influenced by the words written down alcohol consumption and smoking are injurious to health this practice is a total waste on account of the covid pandemic strict orders must be given to the directors that such scenes are not included at any cost this is an appeal to the government i have one more appeal to the government that the hazards of drinking and smoking should be made part of school and college syllabus the government may please take it serious our cultural center may take initiative for such bold steps as it has done in the year 1998 i am happy that during this covid times when lungs are most affected smoking free culture is a great boom perhaps that is the reason that is one of the reasons why covid is seen so less in kerala i hope and pray that it comes into force in every part of the world where smoking is not bad. i congratulate father robi for his initiative to conduct such a very successful and useful webinar i always believe that father robi kannanjara is a person with a midas status thank you all thank you very much thank you professor manama konga okay you raised a very pertinent question of uh, probably social learning by movies when uh, superstars uh, uh, very ceremoniously yes. use uh, cigarettes smoking drinking etc i don't know uh, up to what level we can go in curbing this sort of addiction uh, after uh, uh, mr asher nasir i'll come back to uh, mr mr raguraj is with that very tough question uh, so we'll hear uh, uh, mr asher nasir executive secretary of uh, united religious initiative from pakistan mr asher nasir can you hear me Mr. Asher Nasir. Yes, I can hear and uh, yeah. I share. You, you can talk briefly. Yes, yes. Uh, good afternoon to all of you and uh, greetings from you in Pakistan. My name is Asher Nasir and I am working as executive secretary with URI Pakistan. Uh, URI is a global network uh, and working uh, in 108 countries with 1,053 population centers. In Asia, URI is working uh, with 470 inclusive population centers, and to work together, we are promoting peace and integrated harmony among the people of different regions and places. So, we have population center coordinator from different regions like Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Sikh, and Buddhist are working with great commitment and devotion. Uh, I appreciate the struggle of Chara Culture Center Kuchi and especially to Father Devi, uh, Mr. D. A. Yaraki, Mr. A. Yarana Surat, Dr. Sunday John, Mr. Pastor Monama, Dr. Uh, Ram Krishna, Justin A. Lakshman, and Father Rodi for this great working and achievement. I congratulate you to our team behind our entire development of the 1999 project of banning the smoke in public places. In Pakistan, uh, we have a second smoker and a passive smoker in every way, like in uh, public places. And mostly, people are smoking and they are affecting other innocent people. When we use local transport, people smoking in train, van, offices, and market. Most of youth are using smoking, especially students uh, in schools, colleges, and universities. So in every places we can find the time of no smoking. Uh, but people don't follow it because uh, this is only indicator 
and only a side of no smoking. So the World Health Organization, the WHO cannot work no tobacco day 2020 and highlights the health risk of using tobacco and to encourage a government to put policies into actions that help to reduce smoking and those of other tobacco products. The theme of WHO, World No Tobacco Day 2020, is protecting youth from tobacco and nicotine's use. So we stand with the theme of WHO and we are working to create awareness among youth. There's a slogan of no smoking for the sake of safe environment. So on the platform of URA Pakistan, we are working for climate change. And in the post over 90 period, we need to protect our nature by keeping keeping it clean and fresh environment because by smoking we create unhealthy environment when we use smoking we purchase disease for us and for others so many things uh, we are facing by smoking uh, with, with all these things i would to like to, to thank to all our team members, especially Father Rodi, and who invited to me for this wonderful uh, conference and meeting. So thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Hassan. Uh, now to Sri M. R. Raghuraj, who is anyway part of uh, the governance, the renowned son of a renowned lawyer. Uh, how do you think we, we can get across the theme of probably uh, formulating an advisory uh, on this regard to to avoid smoking during COVID days and I'm probably the, for uh, uh, appropriate intervention of uh, uh, no smoking in public places. You know, though it has created a big awareness, still it is not uh, enforced in a big way. So as a part of governance, being in civil service, what are your comments? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Joseph. Uh, Honorable Justice uh, Devan Ramachandran, Honorable Justice uh, Sri Narayana Kuru, uh, Father uh, Robi Kanantara, and all dignitaries who have joined from across the globe in this seminar. Like it's uh, indeed a privilege uh, to be part of this uh, dual celebration, I would say. Uh, one uh, of the judgment, uh, like which I have been fortunate to uh, go through and uh, appreciate a lot. And uh, to the civil society's uh, work uh, that uh, brought about uh, the environment in which uh, that uh, judgment uh, came about. Um, uh, I would uh, restrict myself to only what I can uh, speak with, even though um, uh, Mr. has put a, a very difficult question. I would uh, rather stick to what, what, I am, uh, what I am authorized to speak. Uh, I had been uh, like uh, about the judgment. Uh, I had been uh, part of uh, the uh, training of IS officers, and uh, the judgment, if one goes through it, it's uh, indeed an exhortation or a direction to uh, the district magistrates to use their powers under uh, section 133. Uh, and uh, it's a creative and a positive use of uh, section 133 um, uh, CRPC uh, that is being uh, that is being directed by the honorable court in uh, this particular judgment much like uh, the uh, Rathlan municipality case, again a celebrated case by uh, Justice uh, B.R. Krishna here, uh, uh, where he had delivered a judgment uh, uh, recommending uh, the creative and positive use of uh, the Section 133 CRPC. There's already an existing uh, provision of the statute. It only uh, is waiting for the rise, uh, right, right eyes to behold it, uh, to, uh, to be put into action in the service of people. Uh, these are situations which uh, are uh, really brought about when uh, the market uh, mechanism that we have uh, in, to organize our society fails and in some ways the polity also uh, is not able to address the negative externalities uh, which are brought about by uh, the market mechanism and uh, that is when uh, the um, that is when that is when the civil society uh, pitches in and uh, that is when the judiciary pitches in and like we are um, fortunate to be celebrating both of these interventions um, uh, as, uh, during this uh, uh, this webinar. 
Uh, I would also uh, like to use this opportunity to highlight that just like uh, the uh, issue of uh, tobacco, which uh, is killing um, uh, around, like in the gentleman it mentions that it kills around 1 million Indians every, every year. Uh, so there are um, uh, what is called non-communicable diseases, which are very benignly called, I would believe, non-communicable diseases, which uh, has a much bigger, um, uh, much bigger uh, uh, spectrum of uh, diseases waiting for us, mostly because of uh, the uh, manner in which we have organized our society and uh, mostly because of the manner in which we, have, um, uh, we are living our lives in a, in a way. Uh, it, it, to this extent that I would um, uh, plead that maybe we should campaign uh, for the re-christening of, uh, 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 re of the uh, non-communicable diseases as uh, socially communicable diseases in the sense that the society, the way in, it, in, which, in which it operates is kind of um, responsible for the non-communicable diseases uh, and uh, uh, it leads to around more than 60% of the deaths as we speak um, uh, uh, in India. And especially in the in the back, backdrop of uh, Corona, uh, it is a very well established fact that uh, comorbidities uh, like diabetes, uh, like uh, hypertension, like uh, cardiovascular diseases, renal diseases, and uh, the to uh, tobacco consumption uh, are uh, uh, heightened risk, and uh, the health resources that would be required uh, to treat a patient would be much higher uh, in case of these comorbid factors. And uh, it is uh, an alarming call for the society to organize itself to address uh, through all means possible, through judicial, to uh, legislative, and through executive action to, um, uh, to address this issue in, in its right earnestness. Um, I would uh, just um, uh, conclude my uh, word by, um, uh, by thanking uh, Father uh, Robi Kanachara for uh, giving this opportunity to be part of this, uh, I would say, celebration. And I hope that uh, this is also the beginning of uh, uh, beginning of one more round of uh, social activism by the civil society, by uh, by uh, by all of us together, so that like we can address uh, the present challenges uh, that are before us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Raghuraj. I mean, you have brought out a very interesting concept: uh, rechristening of uh, communicable diseases to socially communicable diseases. Probably that should be a food for thought for everybody. Now let me have uh, uh, Mr. Abraham Karikam the regional coordinator of URE Asia, uh, to give his brief comment. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And I, I thank Father Roby for giving me this opportunity because um, Chavara Cultural Center is also part of uh, United Religions Initiative, which is called URI, which has its presence in 108 countries of the world today. So being one of its most uh, dynamic and vibrant units in Kerala, I'm especially grateful and thankful to him for organizing such a wonderful seminar like this. And this I see as one of the exemplary examples of uh, judicial inter intervention, if not uh, judicial activism. So this has been a model to the whole world, it is not a, a small thing, you know, it is not a meager achievement when we think of it. And I congratulate all those people who are behind this, all the names who are mentioned here, and I, I express my gratitude to all of you. Is, uh, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, the American philosopher who said, every institution is the lengthened shadow of an individual. So uh, these individuals, you know, they initiated a movement which has uh, challenged the whole world. And see, it is a wonder. Uh, I definitely consider it as a wonder to see 181 nations following suit. See, it is something like a miracle. And, uh, and uh, it all happened from uh, Kerala and also from uh, Cochin, a small the ball was rolled from here, and it is uh, reaching far out into different corners of the world. So, uh, and it also tells us the importance of such initiatives of our NGOs, uh, our study centers like Chawara, and the, the social movements, and also the initiatives of people like Monama, who 
could uh, brave could be brave enough to tide over the difficulties uh, we can uh, we can think of the difficulties that perhaps she faced in those days maybe from western indoors and other people and of course the whole chavara team and especially with the honorable judges and all uh, to support her maybe uh, that gave her the courage to go ahead so uh, what what frightens me is the alarming rate of smoking among the student community as one as a professor and as one who is involved with the academic community now always uh, that is something which uh, uh, frightens me today because uh, i find 30% of the 31% of the american population are addicted to smoking and about 28.6% of indians even today are addicted to smoking and uh, and a large number of students even high school students they are victims of smoking so uh, we cannot be complacent and as sir moderator sir has already mentioned we have a long way to go and i take this opportunity once again to congratulate all those who are involved in this and especially chavara san chandra taking initiative to take us all back walking us through what have been going on what transpired 20 years but this is something accelerating thank you sir thank you father robi thank you uh, abraham kerkam i i'll pass on to uh, father robi achan so that he can play two videos and probably introduce the who who are on the video and then i'll continue okay okay thank you now is uh, sorry for a small interruption because the network was lost here uh, now it's uh, just regain so thank you so much we will uh, just see two more uh, two three more videos please Excuse me, uh, please wait a moment. The tour is still on the channel. Robiyachan, do you want me to continue? Uh, uh, just uh, let's see. Okay. I would consider this event as an opportunity should be explored further to look into similar issues, which has got implication on the health and well-being of Keralaites and people of India. Do I like smoking? I detest it. I loathe it. I think anybody that smokes is an idiot. uh they are endangering their lives plus everybody else i have a friend that died of lung cancer who never smoked a cigarette in her life but her husband smoked so um i don't think and when you sm smoke out in public everybody else is smoking with you and they don't want to be and um you go home you got to have a shower because you smell well i don't like it at all as you may have gathered and i hope anybody that hears this will have the courage to give it up thank you i am christian robinson sirvian college saint joseph ma abu madagascar mani ban fashalamana shimamunula ni fifona sigar efa fandatai fa na voka tribunal la ni ni adi ami fifona sigar ni sota na reu mo pera karma si reu pera me asam na reu Ami fitakina reo ni didi makasta ni fufua na shikiara. Yetu madagaskara dia mishlalana mifei ni fufua na shikiara ampera na akalamazana. Misauta na reo amyade tauna reo amni tutuliayena shini fufua na shikiara manera nda. Ok. Ok. Yeah okay uh, I just can be with our uh, uh, shall I continue uh, Robi Achan Yeah yeah uh, sir please continue with our um, okay uh, now we have uh, 
Mr. Francis Holder uh, from Bangladesh, WFI, yeah. RAC. Mr. Francis Holder. Can you hear me, Francis Holder? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, good afternoon, sir. So I am Francis uh, Holder uh, from Dhaka, Bangladesh. And uh, my greetings to all of you, those who are listening long time. Uh, I'm fortunate enough that uh, I have been born uh, in a non-tobacco uh, family. My, uh, all the family members still today, they are uh, smoking free uh, <clears throat> members of our family. Because my father, uh, he was a school teacher and uh, he was a very strict ruler. So uh, in our uh, boyhood, we have seen that nobody takes uh, cigarettes uh, or uh, BD uh, openly. So that is where uh, this is own thing. But uh, we never think it so deeply. But when we saw in our country, Bangladesh, we find the 45% of the main are uh, about 2% uh, uh, the female, they are smoking regularly. So our government in 2005, they passed the first bill of uh, anti-tobacco law. And uh, it was uh, came in force in 2006. But the punishment was uh, very, very minimum. That is why it needed to amend this bill. And uh, 2013, they passed the bill again and uh, with some revision and uh, the punishment, uh, it was uh, 300 uh, Bangladesh taka, that means about uh, $4. And there are some other additional punishment also. So it was delayed by the strong lobby of the British American tobacco company. So in 2015, anyhow, uh, this uh, law, it just came into force. So this is our situation in Bangladesh because of this British uh, tobacco company, they give uh, the revenue from 75 billion to 90 billion taka uh, per year to the government. So they have that ability. However, Bangladesh, unfortunately, is one of the country who are stands uh, among the five uh, the highest uh, tobacco consuming countries. So this is our uh, very unfortunate norms uh, that we are still one of the first five cigarette consuming country. Anyhow, I thanks uh, to uh, Sabara Cultural Center. And uh, this Sabara Cultural Center, I have to tell something about this center because uh, this is not my new access to this center. In 2007, I got uh, the invitation uh, from Father Dr. Albert Nambia Parambil. He was the founder, uh, secretary of uh, this uh, Sabara Cultural Center, but I got the invitation uh, for uh, World Fellowship of Interreligious Council. That was a, a seminar in uh, three days seminar. So I attended there. And after the end of the seminar, I met uh, uh, Dr. Abraham Karikam, who was just uh, ending his speech a little earlier. So he was just uh, uh, managing a small team, just distributing the leaflets of URI. So when I asked him that what is the mission of this URI, he told that uh, this is actually the promote nonviolence against the non-communal living, like all these things. So he gave me on uh, uh, leaflets and on uh, visiting cards so that I could be the member of that URI. So uh, now, uh, then the next time when I came and I got the assistance of Father uh, Vargis, he was the director of uh, SIVA, and uh, I'm kind enough that uh, Father Bargis, uh, he took on up my article on important uh, practice. Uh, would you and, please uh, suggest that, uh, 
just uh, sum up would you please just sum up oh okay okay, okay. Yes, thank you so um, uh, i am i am very happy that uh, this sabara cultural center uh, they are now uh, doing such a famous such uh, a great job that is attracted uh, the everybody's concerns and today the honorable justice who are invited here the honorable priest uh, uh, fathers uh, who are invited here we think they would be inspired much more and uh, in the long run they would do much more better and great uh, that would be exemplary for us thank you thank you so much for inviting thank, me thank you thank you mr pranath uh, soldier what do we do achan we will play a couple of videos and then go to yeah we will we will play a few more videos now yeah Namaste. This is Guru Dilip Ji from Manhattan, New York City. Congratulations to the team behind the landmark judgment of banning the smoking in public places. In my place, New York City, it is implemented since July 24, 2003. In the post-COVID period, we need to protect our nature by keeping it clean and fresh. Smoking is injurious to health. As a yogi, this is my opinion that smoking should be banned. All over the world. Thank you. Buongiorno e pace e bene a tutti. Io padre Luigi vengo dalla Romania e sono cappellano dell'ospedale qui a Padani. Per prima volta nel mondo ha approvato la legge di divieto al fumo nei posti pubblici. È stata nello stato Kerala in India nell'anno 1999. A questo va il merito a Chavara. che c'era il centro perché è stato un insediato un seminario a questo proposto porgo il mio congratulazioni a tutti coloro che hanno partecipato a quel seminario particolarmente a Chavara che c'era il centro che ha organizzato il seminario e al professor Monama Kokar giudice Naria Nakavi e Lashmane In questo tempo di pandemia Covid-19 sono molto importanti di mantenere l'ambiente e l'aria pulita e senza inquinamento più di prima. Quindi promuovo il motto di quest'anno, un mondo senza fumo. Con quel mio apprezzamento e congratulazioni a tutti e a ciascuno di voi in parte. Grazie. Greetings from Ireland and Boyd and County Roscommon. This is a quick message of congratulations to the Jivara Cultural Centre and everything they have done and everybody involved in has done to bring around World No Tobacco Day and the and the change in legislation no public no smoking in public places. My both of my grandmothers smoked all their lives. They died horrible deaths. Um, stay away from smoking. There's no good in it. Um, it's 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 only the nicotine companies trying to foster dependency. Uh, again, great congratulations, and uh, thank you for all you've done. Best of luck. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Kumar Harga from Nepal. Just kindly information for our teams and uh, our Pachin Kerala team also. Small request for uh, our chairman also. Please follow this one. <clears throat> I congress the team behind the landmark judgment of Kerala High Court to ban the smoking in the public place. Congratulate Sarova Cultures Center Coaching and its associate for taking the novel involved to ban smoking in place. <clears throat> in the post covid period we need to provide our nature by keeping it clean and fresh it's us join our hands to make this world a better place thank you hi okay <clears throat> now we'll, uh, the plan is that we will hear from the last speaker uh, venerable vimala buddha uh, from sri lanka and then uh, open this uh, for discussion from the listeners i mean comments or uh, questions or uh, suggestions like that so in between if there are videos pen, uh, pending we will play so venerable vimala buddha please your turn yeah. can you hear 
Yes, sir. I think uh, he's not here since he has left. It seems yes, uh, network might have created some problems. So that, that's open the floor for uh, discussion. And those who are interested, they can just join us. Hello. Any questions? Just yeah. raise your hands. The web team will uh, coordinate. Yeah. Any questions from listeners? Colonel McCarthy. I'm from Mumbai. Yeah. This is an excellent initiative taken by Chavra. But can we have a similar initiative for banning this political and hatred messages in the social uh, social media? It's a big nuisance. Now, that is the one which will kill the society. <laughs> It's an interesting proposal, uh, but uh, too heavy uh, to take up in a very highly politicized uh, uh, community right now. But I think there has to be small, small initiatives. Is it not right, Ravi Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, anyway, uh, we have to take care of the success, but uh, now it's not easy for us because everything is almost politicized and sponsored by politics. Professor, <laughs> I'm right. Now please, uh, please unmute. Two, only what we can solo. So uh, this is something uh, not that easy <laughs> to ban. <laughs> this is a social media communication, political, which is a political color. But, uh, I don't think we will be you know, successful in uh, entering into that uh, field. Not that easy. May be difficult comments? from the state level, but if you take an initiative, I'm sure even at the central level also they'll think over it. Even I'm sure the ruling uh, parties are also must be fed up of this. Either either they are reacting to what others are talking, or they may be repenting for what they initiated in the first. Any other comments related to probably smoking? This is an ideal uh, time, season, I will say, for the government to take the initiative, especially the government of India and the government of Kerala. Uh, we have been addressing the question of passive smoke. Now it is the time to address the question of smoking itself because of the endemic. The endemic has given a, an opportunity in a plateau. Why not we address the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister Modi and Honorable Chief Minister? Let them take the initiative. Yeah, the liquor has been banned, sale of liquor was banned, even prayer in churches and mosques and temples were banned. And why not tobacco, which has got relevance to COVID-19 infection, why not that also be banned for some time, at least for some time? I'm okay, they better. <laughs> no, 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 that, uh, <laughs> that's a relevant proposal, but uh, sir, you, you remember, uh, you were not there in that particular seminar, tobacco lobbies. Planting uh, proxy people uh, when we discuss uh, your judgment, uh, raising so many issues uh, on how. I, I know it. <laughs> little, little bit I know that they moved heaven and earth. They moved heaven and earth to see that uh, this uh, judgment is turned upside down. And many things they did. They could postpone the implementation of the law passed by the parliament for quite a long time. Ultimately, they had to yield uh, the powerful minister at the center at that time to introduce the bill, okay. and eventually it became signed into law. We cannot blame them. It is their bread and butter. They will try. One of the most powerful lobbies in the world. To my knowledge, it is the second most powerful lobby. Uh, second only after the arms lobby. There is 1.13 billion smokers in the world. We can imagine what is the financial stakes involved. So they have not given it up, of course. They have started diversifying their business into hospitality business and so many other things. So it has just the judgment and the campaign. The entire country should go to the this institution, the great institution, the 
Chavara was taken the initiative in this regard. So it has made an impact. It has dented the tobacco industry. They are put on guard. Thank you. Uh, the, the issue is that probably this is the right time to probably we can camp campaign on uh, uh, an advisory against smoking, which, which has this to be exactly, right. exactly. This is the right time. Where, this, uh, is the right really... time. this is the right time because the coronavirus it infects the uh, the human body. The immune system becomes weak. If the lung is weak, finished. Lung is already weak. Uh, for the smokers, the, the virus will enter. It is easy for the virus to enter. Uh, the immune system, the bodyguards are weak because of smoking. So, what will be the consequence? This is the correct time. The government has an uh, uh, adequate excuse, proper excuse to tell the smokers. Any other comments from other panelists? Just raise your hand so that we can buy The lobby. The tobacco lobby, British American tobacco is coming out the corner to ask it right now. The, work is up, please continue. the British American tobacco company, they are coming out with a COVID vaccine now. They are diversifying their business. Any other comment? Robbie Chen. Uh, shall, shall I wind up? Yeah, you did uh, all did a good job. Thank you very much for the people. Part. Is there any video video to be played? Sir, we would like to hear your concluding remarks. Dr. John. Uh, shall I wind up, Robby Chen? Yeah, that may be a good time. Yeah. Oh, okay. So with the permission of Robby Chen, uh, I start from what I have said uh, earlier and which was carried through yeah. the discussion and adequately supported by uh, Narayan Krupu, sir. Anything, Robi, sir? Anything? I'll conclude and give it to you. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll conclude and me? give it to you. Yeah. I'll conclude and give it to you. So, same thing, yeah, okay. probably the webinar uh, is that. proposing right now to persuade the government to give an advisory against smoking because... It is very, very hazardous at the times of COVID. Whether they restart or not, you one has to give an advisory that people should refrain from smoking in the interest of the health of the public and in their own health. Whether they restart or not, it is a big that's a question they will have to address later. But at this moment, at this hour, it is very important to give that advisory. And that the webinar proposed that sort of a suggestion. And over to Rohit. Thank you, uh, thank you, Sajjan sir. It's a beautiful session, and you are present as much. I think it's not audible. Robi yeah. Chen, I'll call him and uh, tell him. Yeah, I think you can hear me now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Okay. Uh, I think two uh, four persons uh, tried to speak something and Robi uh, Chen speak something. Or Makarji. Yes. Uh, can, you hear, can you hear me? Can you hear you? Just uh, summarize, please. Am I audible? Yes, yes. yes, yeah. yes. Hello. Can, can you hear me, please? Yes. Yes. Yeah, um, I'll go on a paradox turn. Before that, greetings to Chavra. Thanks a lot for organizing it. The stalwarts, the whole team we could see on screen today who were instrumental in getting this judgment passed. Right. Uh, paradox is that as far as the tobacco main content, the nicotine goes, it has got medicinal values. Those who advocate smoking, they say, I'm not in any way advocating them. 
their point of view they say that nicotine has got medicinal values which helps treat diseases like alzheimer's parkinson's disease and so on irony is that the judgment is on smoking in public places the public places have been defined but the smoking at home well the passive smoking effect the adverse effects is maximum at home so when the advisory goes i have two suggestions to make to include two lots in that one is as the uh, speaker the friend from bangladesh said 2% of their country population the ladies smoking well let me tell you that in our country too especially in the northern part of our country north eastern part there are ladies smokers take some action to stop that and they are definitely the biggest sufferers the second lot is the armed forces personnel please put your foot down on them there is privacy there is a habit in the armed forces i belong to the armed forces we have seen it may not be inhaling the smoke into the lungs it may be just taking it in the mouth and exhaling it but armed forces are a group who will have to be prohibited from smoking please try and include that thank you very much good thank you mr thank you so much uh, i would like to give the word to our wagisar um, if wagisar is there is do you like to speak now no our shabash khan pakistan from pakistan shabash khan do you like to say a word yes thank so you so much uh, uh, good evening everyone i'm um, first of all i'm very thankful to mr ashan nazir who invited me for this program and conference i'm very glad, happy to see uh, see you all and listen all the valuable things those you are doing a noble work and uh, i'm appreciate your valuable things Uh, i'm happy i'm sure i'm about be a part of your this program i will do uh, work i'm also working with asha nazir for uh, saving uh, environment i'm very encouraging to this seminar i'm very thankful to you and uh, thank you for this uh, program i'm very feel very proud be a part of this program and conference thank you thank you dear thank you so much hello thank hello, you father ruby yeah is there anyone to uh, speak now uh, or i'll be good with in order of thanks father ruby do you like to add something more <laughs> nice to hear from many people <laughs> so congratulations to uh, father robi for conducting it and all the participants great work congratulations keep it up may god bless you thank you thank you father thank you so much and uh, father benny shepherd a word of thanks for you to every because you are the coordinator at that time <laughs> Please unmute. Please unmute. It's okay now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm not taking much time. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Roby and the team and Chavara and all the people from all over the world. Uh, we did a good job. We all the justice and all the people did a good suggestion. Keep it co continue. All the best wishes. Thank you very much. And there was a suggestion like this. Do uh, the time of this discussion uh, in the Monday. We thought that it is impossible that we should stop this smoking in public places. 
as if uh, Mr. Just suggested there's a possibility to stand under uh, the social media attacks. So that can also be discussed later. Uh, so once again, uh, thank you so much for everyone, especially uh, Justice Damachandran, uh, for inaugurating for this uh, discussion. That time in our first meeting, there and this is Devan Ramachandran, leading uh, judge. So uh, expect that the momentum is uh, just crossed now. And all the this is Kuru, Emma Raghuraj, AAS, Father Biju, what a cake. Father Devi Shepard, Parajan Sir, Tia Varki Sir, Abraham Kirkim Sir, Ashir Nasi Sir, Francis Holder, Vipul Vivanamuthi, and all those who have participated, especially those who are still now continuing with us. I give my small clap as a token of appreciation. And since if it was a seminar, I could have easily given you a hot tea now, uh, but in online, I just promise you a hot tea to each one, each and every one of you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, vibrant participation and good suggestions. Uh, we conducted this seminar, a webinar with the collaboration with the BBGA. All these discussions will be there in most probably in the coming days in the newspaper. And those who to continue, or those who have anything more to add, please give me a message, then I can add it uh, in the print media. And we'll just uh, continue with this uh, dialogue again, and we'll, we'll just uh, share all your thoughts in our website, Chavana Culture Center YouTube channel. And it was in a Facebook Live. Now it was in Facebook Live. Almost 1,000 people have watched this in Facebook uh, till now. And uh, we will just give all these discussions in our YouTube channel, Chavra Culture Center. And we will connect each other. Uh, we will just continue this webinar next week also with another subject. So once again, thank you for moderating this session in a wonderful manner, Dr. CJ John, sir. Thank you so much. And everyone, Tia Varki sir, Manamagokar, Johnson, Abraham Varki sir, thank you so much, Shaju Malegal, Francis Holda from, from Bangladesh, now you have been with us. Thank you, thank you so much. So, that's my name. Have a great day, great evening. Thank you. Bye bye. And if you are free, if you are free to watch, uh, two more uh, appreciations. Let us see that. Yeah. I'm Anthony from United Arab Emirates. I would like to highly congratulate Chawra Cultural Center for the great moment against smoking in public places and congratulate the people who behind this achievement, especially declared the court judgment against the subject matter. Thank you. Vergi is here from uh, Dubai. It's a great news that we got a legal judgment against the smoking in public places. So we already done a lot of awareness program against this uh, smoking in public places. Now the time comes for a legal backup. So this is a great work done by Chavra Cultural Center. So I appreciate, I personally appreciate the team behind this. So thank you for your uh, great work done for the society and this environment. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Sister Santrina from the Institute of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Eastern Africa province. I would like to express my appreciation to the team behind the landmark judgment of banning smoking in public places. I come from Uganda, a country where public smoking has been banned. And if someone is found lighting up in a bar or restaurant or hotel, the person will be either fined or imprisoned for a certain period of time. Thank you for the great initiative.
So thank you. Let everyone be with us for this just cause. So once again, bye to everyone. Thank you, Ashir. Thank you, Francis. Thank you. So thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.